Original. Hello and welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we play your voicemail and read your reviews if we have any. I am Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. Do we have any reviews today? Oh, let's check. Wouldn't that be nice? No. <laughs> what the fuck? What the what fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, last what one's January fuck? 31st. Oh my God. Well, guys, well, get on it. Get unbelievable. on it. Unbelievable. Please. Un- this, we have, I can't believe it. We have an email. Oh, let's read it. This is from Amy from Ohio. Ooh. Uh, parentheses, mom who hexes. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, mom. my God. I love this mom. Yes, I love Ladies, this mom. Ladies, sorry I've been absent for the past <laughs> several months. Congrats, Melissa. I'm looking forward to catching up on so many back episodes. The very first episode I started listening to this evening to start to play catch up just so happened to mention my mom and her crazy ass hexes. Yes. Next time I'm over at her house, we're going to call and leave a voicemail so she can tell you the story about the trampoline firsthand. Yes. She doesn't think she's to blame for the kid getting the bone disease after she cursed the trampoline. (laughs) Maybe we need to hear her out. Ha ha ha. See ya. (laughs) So crazy. I Yeah, we need to hear about it. ASAP. Yeah. Okay, let's get into these voicemails. The bone disease. Okay, yeah, that's a crazy sentence. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is this message is for the web crawlers. This is Carson City, Brittany Bear. Hi. Um, whoop, whoop. I wanted to say congratulations on the baby, Melissa. Thank you. And I'm happy you. you're back. We're all happy, I'm sure. We all missed you. Rude. Um, but I'm listening to the mailbag episode, and this person called in Chase or Chase. I'm not really sure how. Um, I didn't really hear the name very well. I went back and tried to hear it, but um, yeah, something Chase or Chase. Um, yeah, but she's talking about cootie catchers. Um, and I totally remember oh, this. Yeah. I guess I'm an old person because I grew up calling them cootie cutters. Yeah, it's but a cootie I remember yeah. uh, my aunt teaching me how to make them. Um, I was probably like six, so she would have been 16. She's only 10 years older than me. Um, yeah, but I remember making those, and I love them. And I can't remember if any of my fortunes came true. <laughs> Oh, I guess I wasn't doing the right uh, witchcraft. Who knows? And then um, she's talking about failing her driver's test before she even got out of the parking lot of the DMV. I love that. Um, First time I took my driver's test, um, I failed as well. I passed the written no problem. But the actual driving, I get such anxiety. I feel like everything that I knew would go out the window that I was supposed to do. But um, the first time I went, I <laughs> I turned left at a light while a lady was in the crosswalk with her baby. But, like, she was way far Oh, my God. I <laughs> thought it was fine. But, yeah, she had her baby in a stroller, and she was still in the crosswalk. Oh my so God. there was that. And then oh I was also speeding in a school mm-hmm. zone. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah so the guy he was really sweet he made me turn back and go to DMV I failed obviously mm. and then the second one I had um I also failed the second time <laughs> <laughs> and um fuck, what did I do that time the lady was such a bitch she was so mean uh she was <laughs> So just her demeanor, like automatically, my anxiety was like through the roof. Yeah, nice. So I uh, I didn't parallel park. Oh, there might be a part two to this. Yeah, there's a part two. Man, 
Yo, web crawlers, Carson City. Person Yo. Person. Yes, so parallel parking. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could not for the life of me fucking parallel park. Mm-hmm. I remember before my driver's test, my mom's trying to teach me, and oh my God, we got into fights, and I would always end up in tears. Yeah. Oh, and no. yeah. So I failed the parallel park that time. Um, I think I also, oh, I failed to yield um, when I was merging into traffic. I didn't yield, I guess, um, and I passed one off, so yeah, auto fail. Um, and then the third time. She's doing some of her worst driving on these tests. And the lady was amazing. She was like this older woman. Mm-hmm. And it, I remember it was like a really hot day. And so we got in the truck and I blasted the AC. <laughs> and I just remember her saying, oh, thank the gods for air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I know that we were just like talking, like chit chatting. And um, she was a cute older lady. She's probably like in her 60s. Super awesome. And I. Uh, yeah, so we were just, like, talking, and then she's talking about this restaurant and asking if I'd ever been there. I was like, no, I haven't. And she's like, oh, my oh, God, no. you have to go. The food is divine. Uh, she's a character. You guys go she's together? so cute. Um, yeah, so she had me parallel park, and I finally did it. But, like, nice. she didn't have me par- parallel Yay. park between any cars. She just, like, pretend there's two cars, and you just parallel park. <laughs> nice. And I fucking did it. Nice. And um, we made it back. I didn't speed in the school zone. I didn't turn while someone was in the crosswalk. Um, I did all the right things. So third time was the charm for me. Nice. And I was, like, 19. When I got my driver's license. So, wow. um, yep, that's it. That's all I have. Um, I love, love, love you guys. Bye. Wow. That's I don't really know funny. anyone who has passed a driver's test on the first time. On the first time. Yeah, I think it's unheard of. Maybe they, like, don't let you on purpose. They want you to work for it. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. Next message. This message is for the web crawlers. This is Sarah in Nashville. I had to call because I'm having a prediction and I need to share it with you. Okay. Okay. I have been listening a lot about this chatbot CPT. I don't know about it. I've never been on it. Oh, the chatbot. I've been hearing about what it gives all this kind of great information. You can ask it really deep questions and it can give really intelligent responses. I predict... There will be a cult following at some point of the chatbot. I don't know how it will happen, but the chatbot is going to get, it's going to like spew out some like really crazy like stuff at some point and people are going to follow it and they're going to like ask it more questions like, what should we do with, you know, aliens and are they coming and should we get ready? Anyway, crazy, crazy thought. We're, we're in crazy times. Anyway, love y'all. Uh, la la la. So that's you know the Chat GPT thing. No, I don't know what that is. That, no, remember we you sent it to me. Oh, that's was, what I used. Like, yeah, it was like journalists use it a lot for research or like yeah and i asked it who i asked it who you were and it knew who you were and then i asked who is ali siegel and it was like ali siegel is not a public figure and she, there is no but it said i was like a, an author of a book about adopting children it was incorrect <laughs> yeah. yeah but that's crazy so she predicts that it's gonna like spew out something insane and people are gonna be like, Well, that's got a point. <laughs> I see that. I could see people thinking it's like matrix. But that God. Seinfeld you watch the Seinfeld AI thing. Oh that yes. I sent you. Yes. That that was crazy. It got shut down because Jerry, well, his name is Larry, like said some like anti trans stuff. Like it Oh found my god, a- really? Well, because eventually, you know, it just works off of info. It's going to eventually come across like, you know, hate speech or whatever. And it's going to like repeat it. Oh, God. And so it took it only took like a month for it to like do that, which is. I mean, that's interesting. You knew eventually it was coming. But that was scary how like 
accurate it was. Yeah, that's people crazy. were posting like screenshots of like Jerry saying stuff that like could have been on the show. That's crazy. It's, ter- it's terrifying. AI baby, can't wait for it to take over. Next message. Hi, this is for the web crawlers. This is Christina. Um, so I've had this story that I've been wanting to call in about for like mm-hmm. forever now. Um, and I, my boyfriend just like convinced me to call in. Um, also my boyfriend is Mikey who called in about the Zaw burglar. And there was like a lot more to that story that like he didn't say, but I'll call back, whatever. Okay. So anyway, so I have a ghost story. Um, Sorry. I just ate some, like, Korean food that was, like, very spicy. So I'm, like, really mm-hmm. spicy right now. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I also just, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having drinks. But um, anyway, so the larger story is that there has been, we've had a, like, roughly three, three and a half year ghoul saga However, I'm only going to tell you about one story today. This is going to be multiple parts. (laughs) Okay. So get ready. So. Okay. I walk dogs and like dog sit. And this one lady was going out of town and she wanted me to dog sit her dog who like I had been walking for like years. Um, but I was dog sitting for the first time. So I was like staying at her house. So she was leaving. I think her flight was like, let's say like a Wednesday morning. So I came over Tuesday night and was just going to like sleep there. And then she was going to leave like super early in the morning, whatever. And then I was going to stay there for like a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was going to sleep in her bedroom even on the first night where like she was also there because she always sleeps in her living room because she says that her, so she said that her like next door neighbors, she, it's like a duplex situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said that her next door neighbors were like always super loud. Um, and like, I guess, the bedroom wall shares a wall with like their kitchen and she was like oh yeah they're always like making noise in the kitchen like super late at night so the munchies yeah oh and she also she was like i like to take edibles when i sleep um so like i'm gonna leave some uh next to the bed like feel free to like take an edible or whatever like to help you sleep like it might help with the noise okay there's a part two Hi, this is Freedom Web Crawlers. This is Christina again. So, okay, so she was like, it helps with the noise. Like, you should take a white cloth. A white cloth? A white cloth? My boyfriend just handed me a white cloth. I meant to say, fucking hell. Um, so sorry. Um, I meant to say uh, that she was like, oh, just take an edible. <laughs> so I was like, um okay 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 she had edibles right now um so i was (laughs) like oh okay like sure but i didn't take one at the time i had actually never taken edibles before because they kind of scare me so i didn't take one and so i was asleep it was me and my dog in the bedroom like sleeping in the bed and then she was out, the, the woman whose house it was, um, was sleeping in the living room with her three dogs. And at 3 a.m., the witching hour, mm-hmm. I wake up to my dog growling, <gasps> which she had never done before. Um, <clears throat> so I was just kind of like, oh, okay, like, go back to sleep, whatever. And she just, like, keeps growling. And so I, like, kind of get up and I, like, look. And she's, like, faced towards a corner of the wall, like, uh-uh. the corner of the bedroom. No, I don't like that. Just, I like, don't like that. snarling. No, no, no. And no. I was, like, what the actual fuck? Like, okay, whatever. Like, please, like, stop. Like, I need to go to sleep. Um, but at this point, I'm, like, kind of awake. So I'm just, like, laying there, like, with my eyes closed, like, trying to go back to sleep. But I'm, like, pretty awake. And I'm just, like, listening. And I hear, like, snoring. And... 
the dog, the three dogs that I was dog sitting, like they do snore. So I was like, oh, LOL. It's probably like one of the dogs out in the living room. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like, I was like listening and then I was like, wait, that sounds like it's like coming from inside this, like my bedroom. So maybe like one of the dogs, like crept in here, like got in here. But then I like looked at, I was like, no, the door is closed. Like how would one of the dogs get in here? And then I'm just like sitting there listening and I'm hearing like snoring and then like footsteps right beside my bed. So like a person is walking next to my bed, like pacing back and forth and snoring. No. And so I was like, wait, what the fuck? So I open my eyes and I'm like looking and it's like very dark in the room, but like my, my eyes eventually adjust and I see like a woman like walking back and forth beside my bed. What? And so I assumed it was, uh, the, I, I like couldn't really see her, like her there. Okay. There's one more part. Uh, no, thank you. Part three. Oh, this is from web crawlers. Part three. This is Christina. So sorry. Um, okay. So I assumed that it was the lady whose house I was dog sitting. Yeah. Like she like was sleepwalking or something. So I was like, Oh my God. Like what the fuck? Like she is sleepwalking next to my bed, like in my room. That's crazy. I literally don't know what to do. That is so creepy. Like I literally don't know what to do. And I've never really like experienced like sleepwalking before. Like I don't, I know you're not supposed to wake them up. So I was like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Like, okay, I guess I'll just like fucking sit here and wait. Um, that's scary. So I'm like waiting, and she's just like, I'm just like watching her, like go back and forth, like beside my bed, snoring. And I was like, okay. And then after like, I it was like a while, like I waited a while, just like staring at her. And I was like, okay, this is enough. Enough is enough. Like I'm turning on the light. Like I don't know. I this is so creepy. So the bedside lamp was like on the other side of the bed. And I'm, like, so scared that when I turn on the light, like, she's going to, like, freak out or something. So I'm, like, watching her, watching her, watching her, like, turning my body around to the lamp, still watching her. And I, like, whipped my head around, turned on the lamp as fast as I could, and turned back. Like, literally, probably took 0.5 seconds. I turned back, and there's no one there. There is what? no one there. And the door is still closed. So it's not like she was there and then, like, got out and, like, closed the door. I hate it. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. No. I don't like it. Anyway, that's all, I guess. I'm not, for now. For now. For now. For now. Maybe I'll uh, share my ghoul saga, but uh, who knows. Anyway, love you guys. Bye. That's terrifying. Yeah, that's really scary. I don't like the sound of that. Oh, no, 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 no. Also, no, if it was no, just no. someone just like sleepwalking next to you and snoring. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> oh, God. No, I don't like it. Okay, next message. Next message is for the web callers. What up, ladies? It's Emily from San Francisco again. I clearly need to get some, like, in real life friends because you guys are the only people I call. But I'm just calling to say, uh, Allie and Melissa, this is the year that we get organized. Also, Allie and Melissa have already accidentally deleted, like, two episode files, and that's so real. And I love you guys for that. Okay, bye. Oh no! I could. It's the year of what? Hear, it's the year I of can, something. I can hear anything. It was Emily from San Francisco. It's the well, year of something, baby. It's the year of something. <laughs> <laughs> Next message. Hello, web crawlers. Um, this is Kira. I haven't called in a while. Kira. I am Kira. catching up on oh, oh you're not going to miss episodes, but um, I was listening to one of your mailbox, and someone said. I can't remember what it was. You were talking about movie scenes that really, really stuck with you since movie childhood. Scenes. And I was going to take notes and write everything down, but I didn't get this wrong, but I figured I'll just mess up anyway, so why don't I just read it? 
<laughs> so, here we go. When I was, I think, 11 or 12, my family went to Disneyland. Um, the only thing I can remember from Disneyland is not actually Disneyland itself. There was this um, late night, I don't even know, it was a hotel TV that was just on, whatever was on. Don't know where my parents were, but they were letting me watch this. But it was some old school, like literally black and white, like made for TV type of horror movie. But it was also very PG. I It scared me so badly. The premise is there's a babysitter. I'm going to babysit this kid. The parents are out. It's got to be Chinese or something. It's classy. It's nice. And the kid is going to sit her She's taking care of the kid, talking about the dad's inventions, how none of them really work. And then they put the kid to bed or I don't know. But, um... Something happens where there's like a lightning strike or a storm outside and one of the inventions comes to life. Ooh. And it's kind of ridiculous because it, it looks like the Teletubby vacuum. It looks like the little, little sniffle, whatever. Huh? That has, it's just <laughs> what a is this movie? With a on it and it's a vacuum. And in the horror movie, it just looks like a vacuum, but it comes to life and it slowly starts creeping throughout the house. And what it is, is it's not a huh? vacuum. It is a sound vacuum. So it, the creepy part is, is it'll, it starts out, it goes for the cuckoo clock because that's loud and noisy. And it sucks the sound out of the cuckoo clock. The creepy thing is, is when it sucks the sound out of something, it also sucks the life out of it. So the cuckoo clock dies. And then it goes for, I don't know, the washing machine that's rumbling around. And then it goes for... The TV that they're in the room of, <laughs> What's and they happening? And finally see this thing that's been creeping around, sucking the sound out of things. And we're going to get cut off in a second. Hold on. <laughs> There's a part two. She's describing a movie where it's a, a black and white movie where something comes to life and it's a vacuum that sucks the sound out of things. A t- and it looks like a Teletubby? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God, Crowley, it's here again. Um, I did get cut off that very abrupt guy. It's such a lovely song. Anyway, this machine is going around sucking the sound out of things and then consequently killing them. And the babysitter and the kid find out, so they're running around the house hiding from it. They get lucky, the telephone rings, it kills the telephone before it can get to them. Um, and all I can remember is the very end scene because the... But they're in the, the, the inventor's studio, so there's tools all around. She grabs a screwdriver, and, and it, it's so creepy because it's a slow thing, too. It's like, you can outrun it, but it's never going to stop. It's coming for you. What? So they're hiding, and they're hiding, and everything's silent, and there's no background music, which makes it even creepier. And all you can hear is their breathing. They're trying to be quiet with their breathing, and then when they can finally calm their breathing down... You just hear this bump, 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 bump. And it's their heartbeat. You can't quiet your own damn heartbeat. So they know there's no way they're going to escape this thing. And it's this babysitter and, like, this eight, ten-year-old kid, like, my age, along with that Disneyland. And thank God, they actually defeat the thing. Look, they take a screwdriver and stab it into the body. So, like, the vacuum pierces this screaming loud sound. And so it literally kills itself by trying to up the sound from itself because of this pressure release of the screwdriver stabbed into it. But seriously, I remember waiting in line, obviously, because that's what you do at Disneyland, and that made for TV movie. And that is it. That's my Disneyland memories. So if anyone knows what that is, please tell I me. Do. I do. I know what it is. God, you do. Time I thought I made it up. Okay. The sound stealing vacuum that looks like the Teletubby guy. <laughs> okay. What did you find? So I go- I googled and I I googled uh, I googled vacuum that vacuum sucks that sucks sound. out the sound in life, and I found on um, Sci Fi Stack Exchange someone wrote and it's like a Reddit boy and babysitter are terrorized by life sucking vacuum, and it says. I have been looking for this TV show movie for the longest time. For what I can remember, it was in black and white, and its style was very similar to that of Twilight Zone or other limits. It might have been a movie. 
From my recollection, a young boy has a new babysitter to watch him while his parents are away. The boy has interest in engineering and has many gadgets in his room. One of those gadgets looks very similar to a vacuum cleaner from those times. The vacuum cleaner like device is turned short is turned on shortly after the babysitter arrives. The boy and the babysitter then figure out the vacuum cleaner is sucking the life force out of objects. <laughs> It detects the object by sound, then sucks on it until it no longer produces the sound. This is true what? for both inanimate and animate objects. The vacuum cleaner sucks the life force out of everything in the house, leaving it dark and silent. In the end, the boy and the babysitter are sitting in the closet hiding from it, but it detects their heartbeats. This is all I can remember from it. I want to watch it again as I do not remember the ending, but I, can, I don't remember what it is. And this oh. is my, I first I was like, oh my God, did she write this? But it's oh, from right. someone named Matt, Matt Sizzle. And someone answered saying, to me, this sounds similar to Hush, the 18th episode of season four from Tales from the Dark Side. Whoa. But the thing that she says, the one main thing that doesn't match though, is that this episode itself is in color. Oh. So that's the one discrepancy. Weird. But it, she says it's the exact same story. Oh, weird. So maybe they made huh. a black and white version and yeah. a color version, or maybe their their TV was just both on it black, black and white. And white TV. It was a black and white TV. <laughs> I mean, I don't... Weird. I don't know. Um, That's so specific that she remembers all of those details. It's really, crazy. really crazy. Um, it reminds me huh. of this podcast where this guy called in and he remembered this song from his childhood. I think you oh. listened. Yeah, what was that? Was that Radiolab? Yeah, one of the, where they recreated the song. Yeah, he was like, I I know this song. Like, I can't find it yes. anywhere. And like, they had him go into the studio and like sing the song, how he remembered yeah. it. And then they like called a bunch of producers and like record people and no one could like remember the song. And everyone's like, I haven't right. heard of it. And then someone was like, no, I think I have heard this song. And it was like some obscure single, like that. It yeah. was like a one hit wonder Anyways, that's interesting. I'm glad we got. Yeah, to that was a good it. podcast episode. Yeah. Another another case solved by the web crawlers. Another case solved by okay. Google. Next message. Hey, web crawlers! This is Joran calling Jordan. from Dallas, Texas. Um, I, I was wondering if you guys are familiar with Rhodesia. The country Rhodesia. Let me I've tell you why I'm saying this. Um, I've been getting into a band called Japan. They were uh, like a new yeah. wave art rock band right around 1980. They just put out like four albums. Anyway, um, there's a song of theirs called Rhodesia, which is a cool oh. song. And I was listening and I, then I was like, did I just hear the N-word in it? What's going oh. on? So I looked up the lyrics and sure enough, there was. And I thought, Ugh. But not in a condoning the use of that. Anyway, um, and then I recently heard on a podcast, um, that, and sorry for cheating on you and listening to another podcast, but it How did ha you? it just happened. Um, we were drinking one night, and um, I, I started listening to them, <laughs> and you weren't around. Um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, uh, they were talking about... Martin Luther King and his assassination and how the guy who was convicted of it, he was going to go to Rhodesia because it was like a white supremacist country. And I was like, what's going on? So I looked it up and maybe this is well known to everybody, but it wasn't to me. Zimbabwe was at various times, it was a colony uh, of Britain and uh, called Rhodesia, named after a guy whose last name was Rhodes. Um, and it was, as you would imagine, it's Africa, a largely black population. Um, and then the, uh, the minority whites um, created a government and ruled it uh, on and off in the 19th and 20th century. And there were real uh, bad conflicts between uh, 
white and black uh, in Rhodesia. And I tried finding like mysteries to really make it web crawlery, and I couldn't really find any. There were some discoveries there of like um, a, a, a different form of Homo sapiens in some cave called the Bone Cave, and that sounded real promising, but it, I don't think there really is much there. Anyway, um, oh, man, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, oh, and so recently, I guess, uh, Rhodesia has been adopted by the alt-right and the racists. Oh, wow. Um, as like something they subtly put on the on clothes and that sort of thing, like the Rhodesian oh, flag and that sort of. There's a part two. This doesn't sound good. I've heard of Rhodesia. I haven't. No. And part two begins now. Um, so yeah. the, uh, all right uses like the Rhodesian flag on clothes and things. And then oh uh, Dylan Roof, one of those, one of our many mass shooters, I guess he wrote his uh, manifesto and posted it on a site called The Last Rhodesian. So anyway, I just feel like, wow, there's this whole creepy world out there. Um, and the, the word Rhodesia, it sounds exotic and nice and all of that, but... Right turns out to not have a great history. Again, there's no mystery here, but I just thought yeah, it's I'd share this uh, discovery with you guys. Okay, great to have you both back. Um, it's like seeing old friends and all of that stuff. So, uh, God bless. Bye. Bye. That's that crazy. Looks... I haven't heard of that. No. I mean, I've heard of the country Rhodesia, but I didn't know it was like used by white supremacist. That's crazy. Oh, this article, New York Times 2018, Rhodesia's dead, but white supremacists have given it new life online. Well, oh, weird. Make Zimbabwe Rhodesia again. Oh, oof. no, 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 no. Yeah, that's bad no, news. No, no. That's bad news. Bad news. I don't like the sound. Wow, of that. that's interesting. Okay, well, that's the last message of the day. Oh, leaving it on a high note. <laughs> leaving it. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, I hope everyone has a really lovely uh, Valentine's Day. Whether you're single or you're in a couple or you're in a thruple or a quadruple, whatever quadruple. the kids are doing, whatever the kids are doing these days, <laughs> it's always just important to love yourself and thy neighbor. I'm Ali Siegel. <laughs> I'm Melissa <Alyssa> Stenton. <laughs> and we're the web crawlers. Bye. Bye. An Erio's original. Powered by ACAST.